we have learned about this uh, process differentiation, right? Now, quick note, I'm sure Mrs. Lee has mentioned this to you, but the verb differentiate, it creates a new function, and what is that thing called? It's called the derivative, right? So what you get out of this is the derivative, but please, 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 note this is the noun, differentiate is the verb, derive, despite the way this word looks, derive is not the verb, you are not deriving, I mean, you might be, but you, most of you are not, okay? We are differentiating to derive from a function to its derivative, which tells us what? What does the derivative tell us about a function? It tells it's gradient, right? Which is why we often call the derivative the gradient function. Okay. Now, this idea of the derivative being the gradient function is where we begin. It's our foundation. But we quickly realize that actually differentiation is also useful for all kinds of other things that has nothing to do with the gradient function. So it's a process that can just be done to whatever function you like. And so we need an operator to place the front out of this, just like you know, taking logs is an operator, log of something, or you know, raising something to a power, or a square root sign. These are all operators that, like the square root sign, where did we first meet the square root? What do we, why did we care about it? What kind of problems were we trying to solve? We were trying to solve problems like this, right? So we're like, okay, I know this, I know this, I can find this, but I require the square root, right? Now, we began trying to solve this problem, but then we realized actually square roots are useful for all kinds of other things that have nothing to do with right angled triangles. It's the same deal here with the derivative, okay? So how do we begin with this? So we said if you have some function, f of x, then its derivative, f dash, is equal to a particular limit. Do you remember what the limit was? Limit as h approaches zero of what? I'll give you a clue. It's a fraction. f of x plus h. You take away f of x, and what that's divided by is h. Very good. Okay. Now, you should have this, and this should be like imprinted into your memory. Okay. It's really important. First principles. It's something we return to over and over again. Every time that you're going to learn something new to differentiate, at the moment all you know how to differentiate is polynomials. Every time you learn how to differentiate a new thing, like say trig functions, exponentials, logs, when we get there, we always come back to this. That's why it's called first principles. Okay? But I want you to remember, because it's the gradient function, right? this fraction corresponds to gradient. What is the fraction of gradient actually? What are the two components usually? Don't worry about the algebra. What are the two components? On the top you've got rise which is this guy, right? That's your f of x, f of x plus h. The difference, of course, is the rise. And then on the denominator, you have the run. Very good. OK, now, this is long and awkward, though. We don't need to go through first principles every single time. If we have any kind of function, wrong color, if we have any kind of function y, right? We can write the derivative just as y dash. We can use this same notation, OK? But I want to introduce to you a better way of doing this, I'm going to objectively say better, because this dash notation is kind of useful because it's succinct, but it's not very descriptive. It doesn't tell you, for example, what you're differentiating with respect to. Like, that doesn't mean anything to you at the moment because you've only ever differentiated with respect to one thing, like say x, but later on you'll need to differentiate with respect to other things, and this dash notation kind of lets you down. Okay? So here is the differential operator I'm going to introduce. If you have a function for um, a function y, Right? Its derivative can be expressed in this way. <clears throat> d on dx, y. Okay. Now, this thing here, which I've placed at the front of y, you should put a big box around it, and you should put an arrow going from your heading to that box, because this thing is called the differential operator. It's just like log, right? It's something which you apply to something else, okay? Uh, it's a function of its own. That's why it doesn't make sense, you don't have to write this down. It doesn't make sense to say this, for example, because it's an operator. It needs to operate on something, okay? Um, d on dx is equal to, doesn't equal anything, right? It's, it's got to be multiplied by, or be operated on something like that, right? In the same way that this doesn't mean anything. Five times, Nothing equals something. It's an operator, right? Multiplication is an operator, has to apply to something, okay? So, this is saying differentiate this thing, the 
as you can see here, right, there's a parallel between thinking about differentiation as an operator and thinking about it as a function, namely gradient, right? I can write this thing over here, d on dx of y, I can write it as a single thing. It's really being applied to, this numerator is really being applied to y, right? So I can write this with the d and the y combined. Okay. Now many of you have seen this before, you've encountered it, you're like, oh yeah, I recognize that thing, I've heard of this before. Okay. Uh, that's just another way of saying the derivative, right? For all intents and purposes, yes, but you have to be very, very careful with it. Okay. Let me say two things about it. Number one, what we love about it, what's so powerful, is that it preserves the original meaning of differentiation, the original meaning of the derivative, right? Because this D stands for delta, right? It's short for delta, which we use, we've been using in science for years. Delta, of course, means change, right? So if delta D just means change, then what dy means is change in, I'm going to write this down because it's so important, change in y, right? Now we have a name for that that's more succinct, it's just rise, right? That's what the change in y is. You went up by this distance, right? dx, you would extend to mean change in x, which again, we have another name for this. We just call it run, okay? Uh, what it also preserves, so I'm gonna move this over just so it's a bit clearer. What it also preserves is the fact that in pretty much every context that you're ever going to look at it, the derivative functions just like a fraction. In fact, you can multiply and divide by dx on dy. You could take the reciprocal of this and get, instead of dy on dx, you could get dx on dy as a whole separate derivative. You can treat this just like a fraction. It's important to note, if you guys move further into mathematics after here, if you do mathematics at university, you will learn that the, the derivative can't actually always be treated just like a fraction, just like, like four fifths, okay? Because it's kind of not a fraction. Think back, look, I've got it on the board and you should have it as well. Think back to what this fraction actually means. It's got a limit built into it, right? So for example, this denominator, what would you say it's equal to? It's kind of equal to zero, right? It's not really, that's why we use a limit, okay? But it behaves very similar to zero. So it's not like a normal number. We actually, you know, you guys have done first principles, you, you know you do stuff up here in the numerator so you can cancel the h out, so you don't have to worry about dividing by it because it's kind of like zero. We don't like doing that. In the same way, if h is approaching zero, what happens to the rise? We know the denominator is going towards zero. What about the numerator? Think about this, as h gets smaller and smaller and smaller, well, you know, you're, I actually had a right angle triangle here, but I wasn't clever enough to face it in the correct direction. If you have rise and run, and this part, this, you know, this little triangle models what's happening on a larger function like that, as run gets smaller and smaller and smaller, what happens to rise? It, it also gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Do you see that? Right? So this thing here isn't like a normal fraction. It's kind of like zero on zero. That's not meant to work, is it? Right? So you have to be careful with this object. For the significant number of you, if you go and do a science degree or an engineering degree, you'll do first year mathematics and you'll learn you have to treat this object with finesse and care. It's not just like this fraction. Okay? But for all intents and purposes over the next two years, you will treat it just like a fraction. You'll multiply by it, you'll take reciprocals, you'll do all the things you normally do to fractions as well. Okay?